In this video, we're going to learn about the early postmortem changes which happens after death. Before moving on, welcome to Medbills Med Simple. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you can keep watching all my upcoming videos without missing out any of them. And also make sure to check out my 30 minutes why video. The link will be available on the screen on the top right corner. So the important early postmortem changes are algor mortis, rigor mortis and liver mortis. We will see each of this in detail in this video. Algor mortis is also called as postmortem cooling. So the body's temperature starts to fall after death. But initially the body's temperature will not fall because of endogenous heat production which is going to happen in the tissues which are still alive in the body and the metabolism which is happening inside those tissues and once there is complete death of and once the death of those tissues starts to happen there will be decrease in metabolism in the body and then finally temperature starts to fall down and algor mortis starts to set in so the core body temperature can be measured from the body and that will help give us a clue regarding the time since death the usual sites for measuring of core body temperature are rectum and if not possible the next site is subhepatic space which is the space under the liver so initially there won't be any decrease in body temperature that is because of the ongoing metabolism which is happening in the tissues which are still remaining in the body which are still alive and this is happening for the first one hour where there will be no decrease in body temperature so that is a plateau phase and then once the tissues are completely dead there is going to be a linear decrease in body temperature which you can see in phase 2 usually the rate of fall of temperature is about 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 degrees celsius per hour and this lasts for about 12 to 16 hours and then there is a terminal phase which is phase 3 which is also a plateau phase so this happens after 16 hours so you can see that the temperature of the body is not touching the baseline it is still above the baseline that is because of ongoing bacteri bacterial activity inside the body which is occurring because of putrefaction and because of the bacterial activity there is heat production in the body so that is why the body temperature is not touching the baseline so these are the three phases of how body's temperature starts to fall after death which is also called as algor mortis so this curve is sigmoid shaped or inverted S shaped curve because it looks like an inverted S. So there are certain conditions where there can be a delay in decline of body temperature. For example heat stroke. Here the decline in body temperature can happen after 2 hours whereas usually the body temperature starts to fall after 1 hour. The, the reason here is that in heat stroke the reason for death is that the person is exposed to lots of heat and the body temperature is raised so much at the time of death so from that high temperature the temperature has to start falling so that is why there is a delay in decline of body temperature it is also delayed in conditions like tetanus and strychnine poisoning these are conditions where there is excessive muscle contraction and that is going to produce excessive heat from the body and that is why there is a de de delay in decline of body temperature in these conditions also and we also know that septicemia is a condition where there is already increased heat production because of fever in the body so at the time of death the temperature is already high so these are certain conditions where there is a delay in decline of body temperature so the next thing which you are going to see is liver mortis it is also called as postmortem staining or lividity or hypostasis so this is another early postmortem change so let us see about this in detail so this is a bluish purple discoloration which happens to the body usually happens in the dependent parts let us consider this person died in supine position which means his back was on the ground so here you can see that there is hypostasis or postmortem staining of blood because of pooling of blood in the dependent parts of the body which is the back of this person but you can also see certain white areas which are not stained in this person so this is called as contact pallor because the bony prominences and elevations on the body which are getting compressed against the surface on which it is lying will not undergo postmortem staining so this surf this surface will appear pale and that is called as contact pallor so 
Like Algor Mortis, Live Mortis also has various stages. In the first 30 minutes to 1 hour, there is initiation of Liver Mortis where it is starting to occur in the dependent parts of the body. By 4 hours, there are confluent sites of staining of Liver Mortis, so which means that large areas of postmortem staining can be seen which are in the dependent areas. And by 6 to 8 hours, fixation of postmortem staining happens. So once fixation has happened, even if you change the position of the body, there will not be changing of the postmortem staining which has already occurred. So this helps us to know the position at the time of death of the person. Now there's a concept called secondary lividity. This happens when the position of the body is changed before fixation of liver mortis has occurred. So for example, let us say a person died in supine position and someone changed his position from supine position to prone position. Now the dependent position portion of his body is his belly and the front portion of the body. So the staining instead of happening in the back because he died in supine position, since they have changed the position of the body to prone position before the fixation has started, fi fixation has occurred, there will be postmortem staining in the belly and in the front portion of the body. So, th so this is called as secondary lividity. In certain conditions there can be absent liver mortis or postmortem staining. For example, if, a bo if the dead body is flowing continuously in river in cases of drowning, there will be continuous change of position of the body. So it is not possible for postmortem staining to happen. And in cases of severe blood loss, there will be inadequate blood for postmortem staining to happen. And there's a special pattern called Glovenstocking pattern of postmortem staining which is seen in hanging. This is because the dependent portions in hanging are the hands and feet and blood starts to pull in these areas because of gravity. And that is why this kind of Glovenstocking pattern of postmortem staining is seen in hanging. Before moving on, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, postmortem staining can be of various colors in various conditions. For example, if a, if a person died with carbon monoxide poisoning and he develops postmortem staining after death, it will be cherry red in color. And in cyanide poisoning, it is brick red in color. In nitrites poisoning, it is reddish brown in color. Potassium chloride poisoning, chocolate brown in color. Phosphate poisoning, dark brown in color. Hydrogen sulfide poisoning, bluish gray color, bluish green color. Hydrogen sulfide poisoning, bluish green color. Opium poisoning, gray color. In hypothermia, it is bright pink in color. In asphyxia, it is purple. In septic abortion, it is pale bronze in color. So now let us see about rigor mortis, which is also known as cadaveric rigidity. It is often confused with another thing called cadaveric spasm. So first let us see about cadaveric spasm. Cadaveric spasm is a change which happens immediately after death, unlike cadaveric rigidity which happens after some time after death. Cadaveric spasm sometimes gives us the clues about the cause of death and it cannot be altered artificially. So it cannot be made or it cannot be changed artificially. So it is helpful in identifying suicides by firearms. For example, if a person shoots themselves, uh, it will be helpful to identify that in certain cases and also in drowning. Now let us see how it works. For example, let us say a person kills himself by shooting with a gun and after death, the gun is removed from their hand. So at the time of death, what happens is that there will be maximum amount of contraction of muscles in their hands. So that will be sustained continuously. So even after you remove the gun from the hand, their hands will be in that position only as in they are holding a gun. It will not be possible to change that position by ourselves, And this is a change which is going to last longer than rigor mortis. So this kind of gives a clue regarding the cause of death. The attitude of the body at the time of death gives us clue regarding the cause of death of the person. Unlike rigor mortis, there will not be a phenomenon called primary flaccidity in case of cadaveric spasm. Now this you will understand once we talk about rigor mortis. So rigor mortis, also known as cadaveric rigidity, is a condition where the muscles are stiff. So rigor mortis does not develop immediately after death like cadaveric spasm which we saw previously. Rigor mortis does not occur immediately after death like cadaveric spasm which we saw previously. 
So initially, immediately after death, there will be a stage of primary flaccidity where all the muscles of the body will become flaccid and it will be easy to move all parts of the body easily. And after that, rigor mortis will start to set in where all the muscles of the body will become rigid and stiff where it will not be possible to move their position. And after that, once rigor mortis is over, there will be a stage of secondary flaccidity where again the body will become flaccid. Now let us see how rigor mortis is happening, the mechanism behind it. We know that skeletal muscle has thick and thin filaments. The thin filaments are called as actin and thick filaments are called as myosin. Contraction of muscle happens when the actin and myosin filaments overlap. So there is ATP which is present between actin and myosin. This ATP has to be broken down by an enzyme called ATPase into ADP and phosphate. This releases energy and this energy is useful for muscle contraction. This energy is what is going to cause overlap of actin and myosin causing muscle contraction. And after that, ADP and phosphate which is released from ATP will have to rejoin and form ATP again. And this is when the actin and myosin move away from each other and muscle relaxation will happen. Now let us consider this as a skeletal muscle cell called sarcomere and inside that there is an organelle called sarcoplasmic reticulum which is the storehouse of calcium inside the sarcomere. So after death what happens is that there will be leakage of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcomeres and what happens is that there will be contraction of all muscles because of this because the intracellular calcium levels begins to rise. Pumping back this calcium into sarcoplasmic reticulum requires ATP and we know that after death there is no ATP available. So since there is no ATP after death, this calcium is gonna stay inside the sarcomere causing prolonged muscle contraction. This rigor mortis begins to occur when the ATP levels are about 85% of normal ATP levels in the body and it is at its peak when the ATP levels reach to just 15% of normal ATP levels of the body. There is a rule called Nishten rule which gives us the sequence at which rigor mortis occurs in the body. Initially, rigor mortis starts to occur in the involuntary muscles of the body, for example, the myocardium of the heart and this starts usually within one hour after death and after that the usual sequence happening in the body externally is first the eyelids are involved with rigor mortis and then from eyelids it comes from eyelids it comes down to the neck and then it comes about to involve the lower jaw and then the face and then from the face it starts to involve the chest and upper limbs then abdomen and lower limbs and finally the distal most part of the body the fingers and toes will be involved now this is the usual sequence in which rigor mortis happens and this is called Nishten rule the onset of rigor mortis usually occurs after 1 to 2 hours after death and it becomes well established after 6 hours of death and this is even further delayed in temperate countries. The duration for which this rigor mortis is going to last depends on the weather of the place. It is usually prolonged in cooler zones for example it lasts for 24 to 48 hours in winter and it lasts for comparatively lesser time in summer where it usually lasts for 18 to 36 hours. This is the representation of all those three changes which we saw in this video and their duration. The first one we saw is Algar mortis which is post-mortem cooling. We saw that there is initial plateau phase and here it is represented in purple color. We saw that there is an initial plateau phase where there will be no fall in temperature because of the ongoing metabolic activity in the remaining living tissues in the body and after that you can see that there is a fall of the body temperature at the rate of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 degrees celsius per hour and then finally again the body temperature will not touch the baseline it will reach a plateau phase and it will not touch the baseline because of bacterial activity on the body so that is about algar mortis so the second change which we saw in this video was post-mortem staining or liver mortis also known as lividity which is represented in green color here so we saw that it takes about 30 minutes for the onset of lividity and it gets fixed by 6 to 8 hours after which the post-mortem staining pattern will not be changed and it will be seen in the dependent parts of the body and in red color we can see 
the third change which we saw in this video which is rigor mortis which is initially characterized by a stage of primary flaccidity where there will be where all the muscles are relaxed in the body and after that there will be onset of rigor mortis the duration of rigor mortis depends on weather of that place it will be prolonged in winter zones it will be prolonged in winter and it will be of shorter duration in summer and after rigor mortis there will be after rigor mortis the next stage is again the muscles of the body will undergo relaxation algor mortis helps us to identify time since death liver mortis or post mortem staining or lividity helps us to identify the position of the body at the time of death and rigor mortis also helps us to know about time since death of the person we came to the end of this video i hope you learned something new if yes hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that i can keep making more forensic videos for you all and it's not just forensic videos i'll be making videos on all subjects in my school so hit the subscribe button right now and help me make more videos and also check out my other and also check out my other channels by clicking on the links you see on the screen right here and also you can watch more videos by clicking here but before that hit the subscribe button thank you so much for watching this video till the end i'll see you guys in my next video bye